Hello together. So hope you hear me. Let's wait some seconds to allow people in. And So, do you hear me? Okay. Okay, okay, thanks. So I'm recording this session and I hope you see the right screen. So this funny Zoom. Good, I think those who would like to join or plan to join are here. So thanks for joining uh, on this Saturday and at this time, good morning, good evening, or um, good afternoon together. Um, I'm going to show you and present uh, talk about which Kubernetes today. So um, mainly um, compare OpenShift range uh, Kubernetes engine and range server. And uh, vanilla Kubernetes, that's Kubernetes V, or if you want to <laughs> call it Kubernetes Victory. Um, mainly, uh, what I am going to demo today is um, some installations with OpenShift, uh, Range of Kubernetes Engine at the end of this session or in between and talk about some differences between these nice solutions and also with the new cluster API implementation, which uses QADM. And with the Kappa, that's a um, cluster P provider for AWS. And uh, discuss with you about the differences and which solutions is the right choice for you um or um yeah discuss um how is the right way which the, uh, to to deploy kubernetes on prem or in the cloud good um kubernetes we yeah it's vanilla victory velocity whatever um the class api uh, project uh, from the special interest group uh, is pushed by vmware mainly in the last couple of months, last year, and I know that VMware is going to provide uh, their own solution based on cluster API with QADM. And uh, here are some many uh, hosted solutions, which you know I'm not going to talk about them today, uh, AKS, uh, DigitalOcean, whatever, EKS on AWS. Um, but um, yeah, if you're on, on, on uh, public cloud, most likely you would like to go with a managed solution, uh, hosted solution like EKS, um, which I highly recommend as well. Um, unless you have some reasons to go with the latest version of uh, Kubernetes 117 today um, on, on um, uh, AWS, Azure, uh, GCP, whatever you want, then there are some other nice solutions, right? 
like uh, Rancha, or you, if you want to um, use a managed or dedicated solutions, there are some solutions from Transform. Um, they provide the Kubernetes cluster and manage that for you as well. We are going to start our Kubernetes as a service offering. I have a slide at the end of this presentation and talk a little bit about it. And there is also a managed solution from Platform Knock. Okay, so the key enterprise Kubernetes requirements are mainly um, the day two of operation support, which means uh, how good a solution is and supports upgrades, scaling, patching, backup, and disaster recovery, mainly of XCD and or the whole cluster. And um, also, self healing is a main consideration by using different case solutions. Currently, um, yeah, self healing of Kubernetes own components, right? So is um, like Shadula and uh, other um, Kubernetes uh, master components um, are by OpenShift implementation, they are using operators to provide cell killing for Kubernetes, uh, for Kubernetes own components. As well, one uh, main uh, requirement from enterprise, large enterprises, is to manage multiple clusters uh, with the same interface. And uh, also manage users uh, and provide security policies uh, through the same interface for different clusters or um, even on multiple uh, cloud environments, mainly public cloud environments like Azure uh, uh, or, or AWS and, and Google and so on. Um, other requirements are um, to have the possibility and the chance to manage um, other or import managed solutions or hosted solutions like EKS uh, through the same interface um, and also provide for on-prem installations, disconnected installation, which means or, or in range uh, says that, um, that's an air gap uh, install uh, environment, so you don't have any access to internet during uh, the installation and by OpenShift that's named disconnected installation. Um, as well, ARM support, um, which is very important for some uh, use cases, uh, LDAP and Active Directory integration or support, um, how um, monitoring and alerting is integrated in that solution, um, how service mesh is supported, how cloud native storage is supported, and uh, also if the solution comes with a private image registry, like by OpenShift. Um, uh, Ranger supports also you know, private image registries, but you have to take care uh, of the installation on your own. And um, also the integrated uh, continuous integration and deployment and delivery pipelines. Okay, um, yeah, for sure, there are some solutions like OpenShift have native uh, support for the operator hub. Um, for their service catalog, application catalog, and some of them are uh, deal with better with uh, uh, Windows container support. That's um, the case with uh, um, uh, Rancher today. Uh, you can get Windows container support, um, and um, for sure, <laughs> at the end, you want to know um, how uh, expensive or affordable a uh, solution is in terms of licensing and also day two operation, right? 
So to keep uh, your environment running, uh, to be able to upgrade and patch and backup and disaster uh, and have the, some tools for uh, disaster recovery and um, for sure uh, some solutions are operating uh, system agnostic. It means you can use Ubuntu, Red Hat Enterprise, CentOS, CoreOS, whatever. And um, last but not least, uh, some solutions provide um, um, support for different container runtime interfaces and environments like ContainerD, Cryo, or Docker. And um, yeah, and, and uh, currently some of these solutions like uh, RangeChef provide integrated Sys benchmarks that. Uh, um, the security internet, uh, um, internet security uh, benchmarks from SES. So currently um, we have one more than 100 solutions. Uh, Kubernetes, this is a um, spreadsheet where um, some of these solutions are compared. Um, some of them are providing even uh, support for older Kubernetes 1.7 solutions and some of them uh, the latest 1.17. So um, <clears throat> To compare these solutions, you most likely need some days or some weeks. Um, I put some of these solutions together in this style mind map, um, which we yeah, uh, worked with it in the last couple of years, three years, um, mainly with uh, K-Ops uh, here in the middle uh, Kubernetes operations on, on AWS, which we are using today still, but we are going to move from KOps to EKS for some projects or to uh, OpenShift or to uh, range of Kubernetes engine. And uh, the KubeADM uh, solution, which comes from Cloud Native Foundation and the Kubernetes project itself, is supported by many solutions like KubeSpray, Kubicorn, and uh, the new class API project. Um, then for sure there are other very, very nice solutions like Typhoon, um, our own TK CLI, which provides uh, support for uh, automating the uh, uh, range uh, installation, range of Kubernetes engine, and so on. And um, um, in this talk, um, I'm going to confirm some of them, um, but the GitHub stars tell you much more uh, how these solutions compare and uh, how many stars they have currently on GitHub. Um, OKD, that's a uh, OpenShift Kubernetes distribution, uh, open source solution from Red Hat, uh, uh, which was the origin, the name has changed, and that's still the origin was more about the three, uh, that X generation um, of, of uh, OpenShift uh, open source solutions. Um, the RKE, Ranger Kubernetes engine from Ranger, together with the Ranger server and KubeADM, K3S, the new uh, 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 distribution of uh, the lightweight uh, Kubernetes implementation from Ranger as well for IoT and um, CICD, and also the GitHub, uh, uh, the, the, the cluster API. Um, uh, they are those nice uh, um, solutions where 100% open source, right? Which we are going to talk about. Okay, then let's start with the class API, what class API is. Um, it comes from, um, it's a project, it's not a product. Right now, um, companies like VMware are going to use class API in their own 
uh, Kubernetes offering projects like Sensu uh, from VMware or Project Pacific, I think. Um, they are pushing the project. Uh, many companies are working on Class API. Um, Class API provides a mean and a way to use Kubernetes to deploy Kubernetes, right? So you define a set of APIs, deploy that on Kubernetes, um, you define machines, objects through custom resource definitions and operators. Uh, a machine is like a part, right? If you deploy cluster API in, uh, on Kubernetes, you have machine sets, machines, machine deployments, and machine classes uh, compared to um, Kubernetes own resources. A machine set is like a replica set, a machine deployment is like a deployment, and a machine class is like a storage class. So, um, Class API is uh, used together with uh, currently with uh, Kubernetes the ADM for bootstrapping vanilla Kubernetes. Yeah, Kubernetes ADM is, um, in my opinion, though the only uh, vanilla solution which comes from the project. Okay, let me. I let some guys are asking to come in. Just a moment. Okay. And um, the copy or the cluster API provides a framework to um, deploy Kubernetes from within Kubernetes. So um, there, I think this is something which is going to come in the future by many vendors. Even uh, Rancher is going to uh, have support, Rancher Kubernetes engine have support for cluster API this year, I think, by, by the version 2.5 uh, or yeah, by the middle of this year or of, by the end of this year. Um, I wrote a blog post about it. Um, we will come later to it. Um, how to use the current version of, of, of Plus API with the um, AWS provider. And um, currently, the, the only thing which worked for me was on AWS. I tried the Plus API implementation for Azure. It is not ready to go for now, and as well for, for uh, Google. Uh, compute platform, but what it it works very nicely on on um, with with AWS. Um, for sure, it will be very interesting for those who are going to uh, use it on prem with KVM. Um, there is a, a project there um, with um, uh, Metal Three I O. Uh, a support where you can bring up, uh, install it on uh, bare metal environments. Um, I'm going to have to uh, have a uh, closer look on it and try it and provide a blog post very soon to you. Good, um, the architecture, the whole architecture is, uh, um, Mm, as follows. So a cluster is an object uh, in with the cluster API in Kubernetes. Um, you define a machine templates, a bootstrap templates, machine deployments and machines, and use these objects to deploy your cluster from within Kubernetes. So um, there is also a very nice blog post you would like to have a look on it from um, Chris Milstead, um, which describes uh, very nicely what cluster API is and uh, provides some more information about uh, the different uh, objects and definitions here. It is very nice if you would like to have a look on it. It uh, is recommendable. 
Okay, so next is what is Rancher um, and Rancher Kubernetes engine. So Rancher itself um, can is a platform, right? So you can reuse Rancher and the whole ecosystem around Rancher and other tools um, to manage and operate multiple clusters everywhere on any cloud, on on-prem, or um, even use a Rancher server to host and deploy uh, hosted solutions like AKS, EKS, and so on. Uh, from within Rancher UI, or you can use the Rancher API to call to talk to the to the Rancher API and and uh, deploy um, uh, clusters anywhere, everywhere. So and uh, or use the Rancher's own Kubernetes engine um, on bare metal or even on any cloud. Um, Rancher works on any OS, it's, uh, any operating system. It's um, uh, operating system agnostic. Um, on most of most operating systems, it doesn't work, for instance, on CoreOS, Fedora CoreOS, I think, or on, on Debian. But um, on, on Rancher OS, which is from Rancher itself, a uh, very nice um, uh, operating system and uh, we are using that and on, on Ubuntu we, um, uh, in most of the project, but it works uh, on CentOS and, and Rail family as well. And as mentioned earlier, Herenge is going to support as well the cluster API this year that was announced by Darren Shepard on, on, on Twitter. So um, this will help uh, Rancher and uh, Rancher Kubernetes engine to bring more resiliency and self-healing to Kubernetes own uh, implementations uh, and components. Okay, that's another slide. Come in. Okay. So, um, Rancher has no enterprise edition. Rancher has, has support uh, for uh, enterprises and SLAs, um, but the community and, and there there is no community or enterprise edition. Rancher is Rancher and uh, um, is 100% open source software. Um, with a great community traction. I think in Slack, there are more than 15,000 members. You can get support through Slack uh, from directly from Rancher guys. They are very helpful. And uh, enterprises which who need enterprise support, they can get um, um, sign a contract with Rancher and, and get the enterprise support. So, and um, to sum up, yeah, the Rancher is really um, multi-cluster, multi-cloud uh, uh, Kubernetes management platform. I'll show you if you don't know Rancher during the demo later. Um, so, one thing which is somehow for those who are new to Rancher that might be confusing at the at the beginning. Um, there is Rancher server and Rancher Kubernetes engine. So the Rancher server can be used without Rancher Kubernetes engine or with Rancher Kubernetes engine. You can deploy Rancher with Docker. So in a single instance where Docker runs on any operating system, uh, or you can use an H8 high availability installation on any Kubernetes uh, distribution or environment. You can deploy Rancher H8 on EKS, AKS, wherever Kubernetes runs uh, with Helm. Um, or you can uh, go and use Rancher Kubernetes engine without Rancher. Rancher provides a nice tool, that's the RKE tool. Uh, it's a CLI, 
um, but it needs an, an infrastructure. It means you have to pre-provision your nodes and use a single configuration YAML file, define the number of your master nodes and worker nodes and say RKIA. And then the RKIA tool will install, will in install Rancher on your environment. Uh, with this approach, the first challenge is to um, know how you are going to provision your environment. If you are in the cloud on AWS, you can use also uh, the Rancher UI um, to, um, to deploy uh, let, um, an EKS cluster or with EC2 machines from within Rancher UI or you can use the Terraform provider Rancher 2, um, which needs Rancher. It means yeah, if you want to use, uh, deploy RTE, for instance, with Terraform provider Rancher 2, first you need to have a Rancher installation somewhere, even on your uh, Docker uh, uh, instance on your local machine. It's enough to uh, use it to uh, with, together with Terraform Provider Ranger 2 to install um, any Kubernetes distribution anywhere on bare metal or on the cloud. Um, and there is also a yeah, project, um, that new project which was take over from Rancher, from a uh, very nice guy in Japan, Yamamoto. Um, that's the Terraform provider in uh, Terraform provider for RTE. Um, I'll come later, I have a link, I, I think, uh, by the slides to talk about it later. And uh, we have written a wrapper around this RTE provider last year to help uh, uh, the deployment of a range of Kubernetes engine with a single line, single command. So, uh, and you might ask, okay, there is a lot of options. What is the right way? Uh, where can I start? Uh, uh, how to uh, deploy a Kubernetes engine and an H8 uh, range on this Kubernetes engine? Um, I will show you later what the right solution is or um, which options you have to use Rancher and Rancher Kubernetes engine the right way uh, together. Um, good, then uh, let's come to OpenShift. Uh, the OKD, that's I think the abbreviation of OpenShift Kubernetes distribution or Open Kubernetes distribution, nobody knows or origin, the origin um, community uh, distribution of Kubernetes, that's my definition. And uh, this is the code base um, is, um, yeah, that's the AppStream OpenShift code base, um, which works currently only the, uh, with Fedora Core S. Um, and it runs uh, on any uh, OS-based, um, uh, open source-based uh, RPM or uh, OS3 with Ignition support. And, um, but it's not supported by Red Hat. You, don't, you can't get enterprise from Red Hat uh, with OKD. You have to support it, uh, support uh, on your own. And um, there is also a link here to the OKD side. Um, and okay, that's, that's, uh, that was a very nice uh, presentation. Uh, last week, I think, uh, in Czech Republic, uh, by Diane Muller, which provides some more information about OKD and uh, how to get started. So I will show you how easy it is to get started with OKD on AWS later today during the demo. Good, and um, yeah, the commercial version and the supported enterprise version uh, of 
uh, OpenShift is OCP, the OpenShift Container Platform. Um, it runs only on RHEL Core OS. Um, it means RHEL Core OS is a component of OCP and it can't be uh, or is not intended to be used standalone. Yeah, so, um, and uh, since it's a component of uh, OCP, uh, it do upgrade together uh, during the OpenShift upgrade procedure. Um, and uh, it comes with enterprise support for sure from Red Hat. And it's based mainly the difference between uh, OpenShift um, and vanilla Kubernetes is they use some of the main uh, components of Kubernetes for sure. Yeah, so that's Kubernetes vanilla, but they have some nice extensions with the operator framework to provide self-healing for own Kubernetes components. That's a unique selling point of OpenShift currently, which is not provided by any other vendor as I know for today. Okay, then uh, let's come to the demo. But before I go to the demo, let's um, talk or okay, now let, let's start the installation um, of OpenShift OKD, the open source version, or um, later if you would like, uh, the, the same applies for OCP, OpenShift container platform as well. Okay, let's go. And how do you see my terminal or shall I share my terminal? And structure and share my terminal. So I hope you see my terminal. I ask in the chat. Okay, thank you. Good. The first demo is about OKD and install. The only thing which you need to do is um, to download the OpenShift installer from uh, GitHub, create a directory. I have done this. Uh, already in, in this um, folder and uh, create a config for the cluster. So let's do that. So create install config and provide the path to the installation directory. In this case, um, the installer asks for my public key where I want to uh, deploy uh, OpenShift OKD. That's in this case, uh, currently AWS, Azure, GCP, and OpenStack is supported. But AWS works, I think other, I didn't play with the other options, but as I could read somewhere, AWS is supported nicely today. So it asks for the region and uh, it asks for my domain name, which is governance.sh in this case. So let's say um, OKD demo is the name of the cluster. And then I have to head over, I think you don't see uh, the window now to um, cloud.rothead.com and copy a pull secret. 
So provide a pool secret. You need an account on uh, cloud.redhat.com. And then it will create a um, configuration file install config within the installation directory. So let's see installation is oh. installation direct no Fission directory here is my install config. So what is, um, there is some secrets there I can show you, but the install config has uh, the number of con uh, master nodes, the control plane, and the worker nodes, my um, key, and uh, um, the network definition. So, um, IP addresses and so on. <clears throat> so with that, we are ready to um, deploy the cluster with a single command. And it is using in the background, it's using Terraform. And uh, it's uh, the binary, I guess it has predefined uh, Terraform uh, templates and uh, Terraform configuration files. It, it extracts somewhere on the, the whole thing on the operating system under your user and then uh, starts to uh, deploy, uh, create a VPC uh, on, as you can see here, um, on AWS. And after the VPC and the routing tables and uh, security groups and so on are created, it will uh, uh, provision a bastion host, um, a jump host um, on uh, AWS. Um, and um, connects to per SSH with your key to this bastion host, and from there it will install the control plane and the worker nodes. So this will take about uh, 20 to 30 minutes, um, but um, let's switch again to, um, okay. So um, before I switch to the slides again, I'm um, go to uh, the comparison. Um, I'd like to show you another solution um, here to if you want to have um, uh, Rancher Kubernetes engine on your local machine with Rancher server on top to play with it and learn how to uh, provision other clusters. Uh, I was working last year, I think in the summer, on a simple uh, implementation um, with more multipass from Canonical. Now, multi with multipass, you can start a virtual machine, a Ubuntu machine on Linux or here on, on Mac. And um, use this implementation that's a single um, yeah, bash script deploy sh to deploy um, first uh, provisioned uh, multi-pass. Uh, this link is provided in one of the slides. Uh, you can have a look on GitHub how it's done. Uh, you deploy first some VMs on your local machine, then it will go on and download the RKE CLI tool uh, to deploy a range of Kubernetes engine um, with Docker on the multi-pass VMs and uh, then deploy um, Rancher server, that's the third script here to deploy range of server on these uh, RTE machines. So let's say deploy SH and then it will create, as you see, it's starting the first machine. It will create three machines. Uh, they are Ubuntu machines and uh, will deploy, yeah, I have them install Docker, the latest Docker community edition on it, and then uh, it goes on and uses the RTE tool to install range of Kubernetes engine on these machines. And as mentioned, as that, the last step is to deploy branches server 
it will take a little, yeah, about 10 to 15 minutes to, to finish. We'll come back later to that. Okay, are you sure? Mm -hmm. So sorry for the delay. So here I'm not sure I have to share that again. You sure this one. Okay, I hope you see now my browser again. I see all windows from you. Uh, okay. Okay. Could be someone right in there if you see my um, the Red Hat cluster manager. Okay. Good, so perhaps I, I um, talked about the pool secret, um, how it works. If you want to use, uh, play with the uh, um, uh, OKD or OCP, you have to, you need an account by uh, cloud.threadhead.com, as mentioned before, and then you can choose uh, AWS, Azure, whatever, or Baron Bermetal to uh, or OpenStack here, um, or vSphere. Um, even uh, you can use it with uh, code ready containers. Um, I tried that some weeks ago, it didn't work. Uh, but um, you can uh, try that perhaps, or even on, on, on Bermetal. So in this session, I am going to show you only the, the um, uh, AWS um, uh, installer. You can download the installer here for OKD. It is on GitHub uh, for, for OpenShift Cloud uh, container platform as well, I think. And uh, the only thing which you need um, uh, to uh, copy from here is to copy your full secret and provide that you, uh, with, uh, during the um, creation of the install config. So, and um, yeah, after the installation, you will get, you can, um, yeah, see, I have a lot of installations. Most of them are deleted. Uh, yesterday I had a yeah, session about um, OCP. Um, the enterprise supported version for Trio, um, and uh, yeah, tried some installations with OKD, which we are started before. And if you create a select a cluster, um, this was deleted. Um, okay, where is the new cluster? The new cluster. Okay, it's not listed now here, but I think in a few minutes it, it will show up here, hopefully. Okay, um, let's go back to the slides. Um, yeah, these are, as showed, uh, the um, commands, two single commands, which you need to install OKD or OCP. So regarding Rancher, I started to deploy Rancher on uh, my local machine in multi-pass VMs, but if you'd like to have an enterprise-grade Rancher deployment, 
we put uh, together with my colleagues a blog post here about it. Um, on that is more for uh, bare metal environments. It has no automation to provide the infrastructure as well, uh, on, on its own. You have to prepare your um, environment, your virtual machines or bare metal servers and go to if you want, want to have a production ready uh, Kubernetes engine with trench on top. You can follow this guide. It should work. Um, only the cert manager um, part is outdated. You have to use the latest uh, Jetstack cert manager. We will update the, the, the guide uh, as soon as possible. Okay, um, that was about. Um, uh, that is about the, the demo. Um, okay, provisional Terraform branch of provider. That's another right. Yeah, that's the blog post about um, how to use. Yeah, how to use Rancher to talk via Terraform branch of provider to a Rancher server. And uh, via CLI, that's the TK CLI, and deploy on AWS either a range of Kubernetes engine or an EKS cluster. It's really easy to follow. Um, the only thing is you have to know how to um, to install Rancher. Rancher is really simple to install either with a Docker container on your local machine or um, on an existing Kubernetes cluster with Helm. So if you want to try it with um, on your machine, then you have to have a valid uh, SSL certificate, which you can get uh, on, on Linux or uh, on, on uh, Mac OS with MKCert. This is about how to get a valid certificate for your browser and with range uh, on your local machine. Okay, there are some more guides here um, about RKE, Terraform provider for RKE, um, and the range server, the Terraform module for that, and uh, a guide which we wrote uh, last year. Um, this is how you can use Rancher uh, with TK, or yeah, RKE uh, with TK CL, uh, um, CLI to deploy a Rancher Kubernetes engine, not an EKS version. They are two, two, two different commands. One deploys uh, EKS and the uh, other deploys RKE on AWS. That's the guide here. So uh, the other option which I mentioned, there are a lot of options, right? So, but um, as mentioned, the right way is uh, for um, to deploy RKE is to use uh, Terraform with um, with either the RKE provider, which is not ready now, and it's an older version, the RKE provider for, from Yamamoto, but Ranger took over the, the project on GitHub, uh, on GitHub and uh, they are working, that's a release candidate for AWS. It works only for AWS, but um, if you want to have um, RKE, um, I recommend to use the RKE tool and uh, first install a high available range of, uh, range of Kubernetes engine and then go install uh, range on top um, and then use this range uh, either with uh, Terraform range uh, to provide uh, to deploy uh, that via code infrastructure as code or uh, through the UI to install range uh, everywhere. So I have a range in environment here, um, which I'd like to show you. That's Ranger. Um, you see we have, I try to 
import the OKB cluster yesterday because it didn't work. Um, can you send us the, excuse me, can you send us the URL of the, the work? Hello. Okay, so good. Um, it didn't work because OpenShift is somehow not upstream Kubernetes, not vanilla, and importing an OpenShift cluster into Ranger doesn't work. But it works with any other. It's uh, let's say you have a Cube ADM uh, made Kubernetes cluster, you can import it into Ranger. But, uh, or you can, if you have the Ranger server running, as mentioned, on your local machine or on any other Kubernetes um, cluster, then you can either um, um, use the custom option to um, deploy um, cluster, or you can import an existing uh, cluster which you have. Or you can you go and install, deploy RKE. Um, Rancher has an embedded RKE tool and runs, if you run Rancher standalone, Rancher has an embedded Kubernetes engine, which is K3S today, right? So it means Rancher server runs on Kubernetes itself, even if it is a single Docker container. It has an embedded RKE, uh, embedded K3S, a cluster and the embedded RTE tool. And the Rancher UI, this Rancher server, uses the RTE with any other cloud provider to provision, let's say in this case, EC2 machines on um, the cloud provider. And then after provisioning, it will use RTE to deploy Rancher Kubernetes engine on EC2. This is something which we are using in production currently on large scale environments. And um, but we are going to most probably by the middle of this year uh, to move to the managed uh, version on um, Azure, on, on, on AWS and use EKS with managed uh, nodes. It means we don't need to care about patching our uh, worker nodes and the, the master and, and the control planes come, we don't have any access and don't need to have access to it uh, and is managed by, by AWS itself. So, uh, it works great. Uh, as mentioned, we um, are we have also an uh, integration with um, through Rancher uh, Terraform Provider Two or Terraform Provider Rancher Two. That's the new name of the new provider, and uh, are using that in production in many projects. Good. Perhaps um, let's say we want to add a new cluster um, from existing nodes and um, click here. Let's say I want to have a demo cluster and define which Ranger version I'd like to have. That's this Ranger server is, I think, is not the latest. That's the 2.3.3. The 234 is the latest and has support for the stable version Kubernetes 117 today. But in our case, let's say we want to have a Kubernetes version 116 um, with um, flannel, calico, canal, or weave. Um, if you don't need any network isolation on-prem, um, for instance, then I'd recommend to go with Flannel. It's very stable. Uh, or you can choose Calico is supported very nicely. And Canal is, is Calico with Flannel together. 
or if you would need uh, network encryption, then you have to, um, you, you, you can use Weave, uh, which is already uh, also supported by uh, Ranger Kubernetes engine. I select Flannel, um, and we want not to use any uh, cloud provider. We want to have support for uh, on-prem or our own on permetal or any other VMs. And uh, that's mostly all we need to specify here. And uh, what you can get is that you can, um, if you want an all-in-one uh, cluster, even with only for playing and, and for uh, testing, then you can have a one node cluster with all components its CD, the control plane, and the worker. And the only thing which you need is to copy these and then uh, jump onto your um, VM and uh, paste that there, and it will uh, talk to this Ranger server and uh, deploy uh, Kubernetes. Range of Kubernetes engine on, on that node. And if you are going to have an HA environment, then um, you have to uh, select a control plane that's a master and its CD uh, and copy uh, this command on three nodes. Uh, and then on the other nodes, you have to disable here and only click the worker. Yeah, which yeah, that's here, and then copy that uh, command and paste it on other nodes. And with that, you can get uh, easily through the UI uh, a cluster running in about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, so that's how Ranger works or the installation through Ranger. But as mentioned, I recommend to go the other way um, with Terraform and Ranger server to talk to the Ranger server or use the RKE tool. Uh, it's really easy to set up uh, Ranger Kubernetes engine only with the RKE tool and then go on and install um, Ranger server in HA mode on, on, on um, Okay, this is this, no, no, that's, that, this is this blog post, which you can get find on the blog.kvanals.io page. So is there in the meantime, any questions in the chat? That's no, okay. Then let's say, I want to see if my installation is ready. Okay, the OpenShift installation is going on. It's not ready now. We'll come back to it later. Okay, let's go to the slide. There are some other guides here about, um, yeah, that's, that's what, what the, um, is what I showed you. The GitHub the, uh, repo is here. Um, that is installing now. Um, and uh, yeah, either you can um, go step for step, install um, the, um, that's explained here. Yeah, install first, the uh, first script, it brings up the, your VMs, install RK and then deploy, or I use the single command to install the whole thing. Good, then uh, it was a tweet here, uh, discussion on Twitter regarding Rancher and OpenShift. Um, 
um, yeah, a long discussion. Uh, some guys, they don't say, yeah, Arrange uh, um, doesn't work, uh, or, or, or OpenShift uh, needs uh, days or weeks to install. I um, replied that it doesn't, is uh, really not the case today. Uh, in the past with the OpenShift 3.x generation, um, you had to spend some time to get it working on, um, yeah, and on, 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 on in the cloud or on OpenStack, uh, bare metal or so on. But that's not really that case. That was a discussion here. But um, uh, if we come to a comparison and uh, I want to know which really which Kubernetes is the right solution for me or for you. Um, between cluster API uh, with the cluster API provider for AWS, for instance, it's um, something um, which is not ready. It's in alpha three version today, uh, but I think in one year or perhaps less. And the cluster API will become the default and the de facto installer for Kubernetes itself um, because it's, it will provide self healing and uh, Kubernetes, a Kubernetes cluster is defined as an object in Kubernetes itself. And you can deploy, you have a, a Kubernetes cluster with copy cluster API on top and you use this cluster to de de deploy multi multiple clusters anywhere. And um, as mentioned at the beginning, uh, Rancher as well is going to support cluster API as well. I think in the version 2.5, 2.6, I'm not sure, but that's the future. So. The strengths of um, OpenShift is the self healing with the operator framework. That's the main difference between today, today between um, the three options. Um, RKE range uh, uh, with RKE provides somehow self healing, but not exactly uh, with uh, how OpenShift is doing that with the uh, operator framework and um, OpenShift doesn't have really multi-cluster management UI. You, if you deploy one OpenShift cluster, you have one console per cluster. In Rancha, you have one UI, multiple clusters, and uh, for sure for multiple clouds, yeah, hosted solutions on different public cloud environments or on-prem and so on. Um, with OpenShift, that's not given at this time. Okay, you have the web interface of Red Hat, <clears throat> you know, with some, uh, yeah, a little, little, little bit monitoring of different clusters, but not really comparable with that what Rancher Server provides. Um, so in terms of security policy management, both of them, I don't know, okay, the, the policies on, uh, defining policies on with cluster API is for sure um, supported at upstream Kubernetes, right, but not to them in, in uh, the UI. So that's what I mean here, only to, GUI based and it's not given by cluster API. So user management as well, right? It's not currently, but cluster API or they has you can use Octant uh, with cluster API, so have an UI, but it's not really what um, yeah, it's only to view the status on complexity of your Kubernetes cluster, but you can't uh, assign uh, roles and permissions to users. Um, Multi-cloud support is given by all of them, um, but in case of OpenShift, OpenShift doesn't support, as mentioned, 
hosted solutions like AKS, EKS, and so on, branch of DOS. So, yeah, that's about hosted Kubernetes support is given only by Rancher and Rancher Kubernetes engine that says you're really a unique selling point for Rancher is a cloud agnostic and uh, it support as well air gaps uh, or disconnected installations. OpenShift as well, but as I heard and was told, it's not so easy as it is by Rancher. So ARM uh, um, um, architecture support is given by Range K3S, yeah? five and less than eight. That uh, works on Raspberry Pi, it's very nice. Um, here the next part topic is about LDAP and Active Directory support and all our team. Um, I like it very much on Rainship better than uh, OpenShift. OpenShift provides other things as well. And the new version for the three or four that four has nice integration for that as well. Um, and uh, yeah, the other uh, that's integrated service mesh, cloud native storage, and so um, on. Uh, not only that they integrate, it's the same by other solutions. Um, okay, by class API is not given out of the box, but uh, and the other topic, which is very important for on-prem uh, environments or in the cloud, if you want, you have to use a private image registry. Um, OpenShift comes with QIAIO and its own um, image registry uh, implementation, Docker registry. Okay, in this case, with QI, the new version of OpenShift, which runs on OS has um, a support for cryo. Docker is not supported anymore on CoreOS, right? so you have to use their own container runtime environment. But image registry, Docker registry is the same. You can run in Docker container, uh, image uh, containers on, on, on CoreOS as well. So that is something which is not given by uh, RCE, uh, by, by Rancher to natively to the web interface. Um, but I think it's something which is going to come perhaps in future versions of. But you can provide, you can install um, a registry through the nice catalog. I didn't show you the catalog. If you have here, you can launch. And say here, I want to have a Docker registry. Here is the Docker registry. Then you can deploy a Docker registry for your private uh, Kubernetes engine on um, on on uh, your Kubernetes cluster and use that directly. Okay. Good. Then. Um, yeah, the other topic or capability is CI CD pipelines integration. Um, this is something which is yeah, provided better in, in OpenShift, I think. So, or from my experience, um, the CI CD pipeline in uh, Rancher uh, is the, the pipeline implementation is great as well. But to be honest, um, uh, what uh, OpenShift provides in this area is much better. Um, operator Hub support. Um, okay, Operator Hub was invented uh, with the Operator Framework by CoreOS guys who joined Red Hat or while uh, CoreOS was acquired by Red Hat, um, no IBM. And um, they have a native operator hub support in OpenShift, um, which is not given uh, with other solutions out of the box. For sure, you can use any operators uh, on RKE as well, but um, this integration is not provided to the UI. Rancher provides uh, their own charts. Uh, 
Granger charts, which are mainly an extended version of Helm charts through the catalog. But um, I like the, that that's one of the unique selling points by Red Hat uh, on KD or OpenShift Cloud Platform. They are certified uh, operators, uh, which is supported by Red Hat. If you yeah, are willing to pay for that, for licensing, and uh, it's really great. And I hope in summer day we can have some integrations out of the box with Class API and RK as well. So Windows Container Support, um, I'm not sure if that is something which works on OpenShift, I don't think. Um, I didn't do any research, sorry for that. Um, but I know it works nicely, uh, was announced recently by uh, Rangsha, and uh, it works in separate clusters. So the same cluster doesn't provide Windows container. You have to have one Linux, uh, Linux uh, Kubernetes environment and one Windows container the Kubernetes, and then use the Windows container on the Windows version, Kubernetes version or with, with Rangsha. So, the um, day two operation and affordability, I come back to this after the recording is stopped <laughs> at the end of this session and provide some yeah, digits so, um, about pricing. So about um, operating system agnostic capability, the only version of um, solution which I know is currently RKE. Most of the operating systems uh, are supported. Only I think Debian, or they had some problem with Debian. I don't know if it has been solved. Branch of provide OpenShift has only Core S or Fedora Core S support. And about Class API, I really don't know. Uh, I know that it, Ubuntu is supported very nicely, but not, um, not all other um, um, operating systems. So uh, CRI, the, the uh, container runtime interface support um, is um, by, uh, by container D is the default one, I think, by class API and by OpenShift only trio, and they have dropped uh, support for uh, Docker um, and Grange uh, has uh, only support by for Docker, but it was announced that they are going to support ContainID or perhaps Cryo as well. But Grange has a hard dependency, Grange server as well, right? So an RTE with Docker. Um, Good, and then integrate sys benchmarks is given as I know only by the, the latest uh, Ranger server uh, version, uh, which was announced um, or provided a few weeks ago. Good, lessons learned. I'll come back to the pricing later after we stop the recording. Um, if one would like to get an official um, offer and the pricing uh, for your projects, you are welcome to uh, send us an email. We will provide uh, uh, the price list to you. Or they provide some information about that after at the end. So if someone is in uh, Germany and would like to have uh, join us and participate by our training. You are more than welcome. In summer, uh, oh, okay, here we provide also Ranger Dedicated as a service um, together with our Kubernetes services, KKS, here is a link if you want to get an invite. Um, today, please uh, use it as a contact form for that. We can provide a range of instance dedicated for you. And last but not least, if you want or in Germany in summer or would like to join us by Cube Cologne here uh, is in September. That's our Cube Cologne next, the second um, last year at this time in February, we had our, our conference in Cologne. 
and this year or if you want to submit your car talks please feel free to use this link uh, um, we'd be happy to uh, know you and uh, have a talk from you at the conference okay let's see how um, the installation went um, so I'm not sure do you see really now my screen oh okay then I have to reshare again Okay. Are you sure? So, okay, you see um, in my terminal, that's the open source version, but this error can be ignored. I did that several times. I know it will succeed at the end, um, but it needs uh some seconds minutes let's see when it gets ready but back to this one uh here was um the rke um installation <clears throat> the um, uh rke itself is ready yeah so i have to export um, my cube config first um export cube config and then cube ctl get nodes they are as you can see i am using an older version of rke i think um Oda tree something I didn't update that for the latest version, but I think it should work on out of the box if you replace the RKE tool. Um, and the reason for me is I'm really I didn't move to 116 or 117. I, I want to move very fast to other versions. Uh, the latest versions I have to wait because there are some breaking changes from 115 to 116. And uh, now, after the RKE cluster is ready, then you can go on and then install the hmm, no such file directory. I don't believe. Deploy. Okay, that's on RKE. The name has changed. So, yeah, it will use now Helm, deploys Helm, Batilla on the cluster and uh, deploy uh, range a server on top of this environment. Um, takes two or three minutes. Um, okay, I'm wondering. Boy, let's see on AWS what has happened with this installation and um, let's switch back to our browser. This one, this one. Okay. So AWS. Yeah, you see um, what happened. Um, the installer uh, deploys um, bootstrap or, or a jump or uh, jump host um, or bastion host and uh, deletes that after the installation is ready. So. Um, which means you don't need um, to take care about it. So what is the interesting thing then that is uh, that all master instances, they are not exposed to the outside world, right? So they have only their private IPs, so which is very nice. As well, your uh, worker nodes. Yeah? All nodes are don't have any um, uh, public IPs, so for security reasons as well. 
the installer creates a VPC uh, and some routing rules and so on. Uh, let's see, go to the VPC. And here is the VPC or KD demo, which was created for us through the installer. So, and this creates subnets, route tables for that, and so on. That's the, the all routing tables, internet gateways um, here for that. And it's really very nice. They install a day. Uh, the Terraform module, which they are using, um, um, yeah, creates all resources which you need to run your uh, OKD cluster. Okay, then um, I guess so it should be ready, hopefully now the output, yeah. Okay, so um, uh, it provides the qconfig uh, and my password, which I can't show you or you can see my password, I'm not sure. So that's export. And So it prints out the console um, first, then I have to accept the self-signed certificate and then grab the password here, the standard uh, F cube admin. Okay, <clears throat> so after logging into the OKD uh, interface or the, the OpenShift console, oh, okay, gather um, installation is ready, the, the ranker I will show you later, um, interface on, on uh, the OKE local instance. Here are some information about the, class, the number of nodes, number of parts, and so on. Some monitoring and utilization, resource utilization, plus utilization information of the cluster. And uh, perhaps what I talked about the operator and the operator hub. Yeah, that's really, that's, these are the all the community versions which you can get also okay, so after IO. So um, I think the whole site is managed by Red Hat as well. In the past it was a Red Hat logo here on top, it has changed. And um, the difference between OCP, their commercial um, OpenShift container platform with OKD is the upstream OKD version uses the community uh, operators. You see here is the community version. And if you install OCP, they are the um, yeah, supported enterprise grade version of these applications and operators, which comes from with, with uh, OCP. Um, one other um, difference is uh, networking between OKD and um, OCP. Um, OCP um, provides support for OpenShift's own software-defined networking implementation. And uh, OKD is, know, is not the same. Um, if you create the install config, then you can compare the 
uh, supported networking. Um, unless, um, okay, user management with uh, LDAP support, so you can create or add users, groups, service account, custom roles, and role bindings is very similar, or is the same as on OCP. Um, what is interesting to see is, um, Custom resource definitions. Oh no, where was the machine? Ah, I think it was on the compute. Yeah, as you can see, similar to uh, class API, OpenShift defines machines, machine sets, uh, and autoscalers. And so for, for, for the machines, and uh, they are the operators, the custom resource definitions of, um, of uh, for the OpenShift installation on the class topic. Good, that is um, the console of OpenShift. Um, let's see how it makes use of the operators uh, compared to vanilla Kubernetes. Um, I have to switch to the terminal. Okay. Good. Um, clear. So that was how um, uh, Rancho was deployed here on my local Rancho Kubernetes cluster. So um, to see if it works, um, we have to see how uh, see uh, what Rancho does. Rancho deploys, uh, creates um, a namespace, the name Kettle System and deploys three branch uh, server branches uh, containers as HA for HA environments on this cluster and uh, provides a service named Rancher um, which has an ingress um, which is not shown ingresses are not shown here project ink <clears throat> dash a that's the ingress, which uh, we defined with the host name RKE, and it points to all nodes and is exposed on uh, uh, 443 and 800, which redirects redirects to 443. So um, if you want to get the um, interface, then I have to switch to um, Firefox and somehow in Chrome it doesn't work. Oh, screen sharing has stopped, yeah. Okay, then I have to share my screen again. Hmm. Where is that? 